Hello, my name is Sweetie and I want to help you develop your technical competence in SQL. Today, I'll be going through the solution for an SQL concept that is commonly found in interview questions. The question shown in this video is available to you for practice on the Strata Scratch platform. Before I start solving this problem, I'll show you how to use the Strata Scratch platform. In the top left, we can select our database, schema, and table. Below that, we have Strata Scratch educational content. This is where you'll be able to select any of our interview questions or have one randomly selected for all you. Strata Scratch is free to sign up and use and contains over 500 SQL interview questions. So for today's question, it goes, Find the contract starts and dates of top five most paid Lyft drivers. Keep only the drivers which are still working with Lyft. Use inner join to answer this question. You can follow the code in this video or create an account in Strata Scratch to follow interactively as I go along. You can access Strata Scratch using the link platform.stratascratch.com. Let's break this question down into its various parts. Basically, of the drivers who still have an active contract with Lyft, we need to find the first five highest paid and extract the dates their contracts with Lyft started. Just on the surface, we can tell that we would need some salary or wage information of the drivers, their start dates, and also the status of their contracts with Lyft. Before writing any queries to solve this, we need to explore the data available in any tables that is available to us to understand the columns presented and the data they contain. This step is important because it helps us to know where to look to find the best answers. So I will do a quick select here. We can tell from this table that all the information we need is in this table represented by the column names start date, which tells when the contract started, yearly salary, which shows the pay each driver receives annually, and end date, which tells the status of a driver's contract. The end date field displays null for drivers that still have an active contract and a valid date for drivers whose contracts have been terminated. Since all the required data is on one table, we will perform a self-join, which is used to join a table to itself, as though it were two tables, and can either be an inner join or a left join. To do this, the tables would need to be given temporary aliases, which should be referenced to prevent conflicts and errors when using column names. This will be demonstrated in the following lines of code. So here we want the start dates because then we want to return the contract starting dates of the drivers. So we we really do need to get the start dates from the table. However, like I mentioned earlier, as this is a self-join, we need to give the table an alias so that we're able to differentiate the main table from the temporary table that the system is going to create. This would help prevent any naming conflicts as the column names still remain the same and the data still remain the same in each table. And so to tell the program that I want the start date from the original table, I'm labeling the Lyft drivers table as main and I'm also labeling the Lyft drivers table as a temporary table because in a self-join, the table is joining to itself basically. So this is why I use the as keyword here which helps us to create the aliases for the table names. So we will go on to our condition. So 
so we know from the question that we want only those drivers who still have an active contract and so we need to make sure that their end date is now and so this is the condition that the question has given us but as we are also trying to do a self join sorry this should be main as we're also trying to do a self join we want to link the tables on their primary key which is the index and we always show that the index remain the same for each of the tables because it is the primary key now i would order the table by the yearly salary in descending order so that we can have um the highest salary being in the top in the top rows and all the way to the lowest salary basically so we order by the main again dot yearly salary and we provide the keyword descending by default the order by keyword is in is arranged in ascending order or sorts the um, values in ascending order so to tell the program to sort in descending order we need to use the keyword desc and since we need only the first five we are going to limit our results by five we can run the selected query and we have the start date here now we can verify the solution by using a simple query to return the information of all active drivers to see their start date and yearly salary in descending order. So just keep these dates in mind and we will write a quick query just to verify that these are actually the highest paid, um, the, these are actually the starting dates of the highest paid drivers who have an active contract with Lyft. So I'll just update this query. Select everything from Lyft drivers. Where the end date is now. And we order by the yearly salary descendant. Now, I don't need to add the limit 5 because we can still do without it or we can like just let it be. So here we see that the yearly salary starts at 93,977 and drops all the way to 93,916. This tells us that these are the top five paid drivers who still have an active contract. You can see here, if I take off the limit five, we get everything. So then you can get the first five, one, two, three, four, five, and there you have it. So. We see that the query correctly returns the contract start dates of the first five highest paid drivers, but the question asks us to use an inner join with a subquery. Therefore, we will have to update our initial solution, which we have here. Let me do an undo. So we would have to update this solution to satisfy the requirements that the question really asked. An inner join compares each row from both tables to find which rows satisfy the join condition and then creates a result set when there is a match in both of the tables. Hence, in this current solution, the table is mirrored so all the rows are compared. Therefore, by using a subquery to filter out the temporary table to only return rele um, relevant information, in this case, the drivers who are still active, we save and optimize the time needed to retrieve the results. So now let's see how we would implement the same solution with a subquery in the join. So I think we'd, we can maintain this for now. And we can pull our inner join statement here. This lives drivers temporary table goes into our subquery so we would name our subquery temp and also notes that sorry, also notes that a subquery should always be in parentheses and so we create a parenthesis and then we label it as temp a query returns a table essentially so the results of our subquery 
would be a table that we are naming as temp to construct a subquery just create this indent just so that i can look properly formatted we're going to select the index from the lift drivers table where the end date of the drivers is now so i'm just going to run this query so that you can take a look at what is happening behind the scenes so it's given us the index of the drivers whose contract is only now just to give a better view let me just add the end date here oh sorry about that oh yeah select index is a comma yeah so you can see that our results here gives us all drivers who still have an active contract so then it says here that the end date is all null in all of these rows so we have our subquery which we've labeled as temp then we can join on the main dot index should be equal to the temp dot index so now it's going to search through this index and then search search through our main table which is the original lift drivers table and if it finds that the index match that we find a common or an intersecting index then it will join those two and that is how come we're optimizing the time and resources when running this query we still order by the yearly salary in descending order and we can run this query and we still get the same results from before always remember that subqueries should be in parentheses now that the solution is completed we can use the check solution button to validate our answer you can also see how others have solved the same question by clicking the solution from users button in this video we have tackled a problem that required us to use joins with a subquery a commonly tested sql concept in technical interviews it can be hard to understand an sql from watching a video if you need more practice and want to explore the tables used in this platform then i recommend using strata scratch the problem in this video is available on strata scratch and on this platform you're free to experiment with each one until you feel ready for your next technical interview you never run out of practice material with a set of over 500 sql interview questions taken directly from real companies thanks for watching the video if you have any questions about these solutions or sql in general leave them in the comments and i'll try to help you have a nice day and good luck on your next technical interview